Hi, Timothy Unger here. In this video, we're going to cover more editing commands in Emacs, specifically more key chord combinations that can make our editing more efficient. On the left, I have a markdown document, and that's going to cover some of the commands that we're going to cover today. And on the right, I have a just a sample text document, and we're going to use that to demonstrate some of the editing that we can uh, do with Emacs. I'm going to include links to both in the description below. So if you want to follow along, just look down at the description and you can get those files and download them to your computer. Okay, to go to the right buffer, I'm in the left buffer right now. I'm going to do Control X O to go to the other buffer. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is marking a region. So we can do that with Control Space or Control Shift and two for the at button. And I can go down and then I mark this space here. If I want to exchange the point and mark to kind of see what I've marked, I can do control X, control X. And I see I've marked that region and I can copy it with alt W. Okay. So now I've copied it. Let's go to the end here, hit enter twice. And I can, I've copied that to the kill ring, which uh, alt W is called kill ring save. So what I can do now is I can yank this from the kill ring with control Y and it brings it back. And now I have the text that I copied. Uh, I can also do control space and then control P let's go up here and I can delete it with control W or I can kill the region and then it puts it into the kill ring and I can use control Y to paste it back or to yank it back from the kill ring. Okay, if I go down, I can mark a paragraph with Alt H and I can do the same thing. I can, uh, you know, do Alt W to put it into the kill ring and then Control Y to paste it back from the kill ring or yank it back from the kill ring. Okay, um, I can also, you'll see down here this uh, uppercase with the, our this caret here with the L, that's a page break. I can mark the entire page with Control X, Control P. That marks the page. And then I could, let's say, copy it with Alt W. And if I want to do Alt G, Alt G, go to line 14 down here, go to the end, and then yank it from the kill ring. Uh, I can yank, and now I have yet another page. Okay, So I'm going to go back to the top here. And... Um, <clears throat> Let's see what else. We can also mark the whole buffer with Control X H, okay, if we want. Um, and we can quit out of that with Control G, okay? But we could copy the entire buffer. There's other things you can do in Emacs, like format the entire buffer if you're wanting to indent lines properly for, say, HTML or something along those lines, okay? Um, <clears throat> So in terms of kill ring, if I want to go down and I want to, let's say, write a line. This is line one and this is line two. And let's do control space, control A to mark it, control W. That puts it in the kill ring. Now let's type something else. This is line three. If I go back up to control space. So when I type this is line three, I broke the chain of the kill ring. So now if I go to the beginning here and delete this, that uh, line one is the most recent thing I deleted. Um, so if I do control Y, that pastes it back. But then if I do alt Y, it pastes it back to the next thing that I deleted. And I can cycle through uh, this stuff. Hold on, I hit the wrong key here, but I can cycle through the kill ring that way. And uh, there we go. Okay. So um, what else can I do? Okay. So let's go down and go down below this page break here. And we talked about mar marking a whole buffer. Um, talked about this. So we already talked about that. But now let's talk about transposing two letters. So if I spell my name wrong, such as this should be Timmy, right? So let me go forward. I'm going to do Alt F to go forward a word and then Control F to go forward 
Uh, actually, I want to go back right here, Control B. I just went back to the letter I want to transpose with the M. I can just do Control T, and it switches it to uh, it transposes those two letters. Okay. Um, if I wanted to transpose two words, I can do Alt T. Okay. So I just transpose Timmy and I. I'm going to do Control X U to undo that. But if you if you want to see that again, so. Alt T, I transpose that. So I can also do control underscore to undo it. Um, I can transpose two lines uh, with control X, control T. So control X, control T. Now, uh, keep in mind here, uh, when you transpose two lines, if it's an empty line, it will transpose the empty line. So now that these two lines, 53 and 54, are next to each other, if I do control X, control T, um, actually, it, it did it with the one above. Let me do, undo that with control underscore. Let me go down here and do control X, control T. And now you see uh, lines 53 and 54 switched. Okay. I can also transpose sentences. Um, but with transposing sentences, let me get to the second sentence here. I have to have two spaces after the period. Otherwise, this won't work. And to transpose sentences, I'm going to do Alt X or Meta X. When I say Alt on my um, uh, sample text document, that's really referring to Meta, which is the uppercase M here. The uppercase C is re referring to Control, just uh, to let you know. So I'm going to type in now transpose sentences and hit enter and you'll see these two line these two sentences just switched i can undo that with control shift underscore like that or or uh, control x u if i want i can also transpose paragraphs uh, so a paragraph has to be um, basically uh, separated by a space and if i want to do that i can do alt x and then transpose paragraphs and you'll see that the paragraphs have moved if I do control X U uh, it moves them back okay now let's uh, let me do control X O so I can just uh, scroll down a little bit and let me do control L to recenter that okay, that's another trick that we talked about previously okay so now we're going to talk about changing capitalization so Alt C will capitalize the first letter. So if I want to capitalize this I, I can do Alt C. Um, and let's let's go forward here. Let's do Alt F. Go forward to Timmy and Control F here. And if I want to do Alt C, that capitalizes my name. Okay. Uh, I can uppercase an entire word with Alt U. So let's go down here. Now, a lot of times when you do a doc type declaration in HTML5, you want to capitalize the doc type. You don't have to, but it is convention that way. So if I do Alt B and go back, I can capitalize this entire word with Alt U, just like that. Okay. Um, I can also down case or make an entire word lowercase. Let's just go forward here with Control F. So I get on the first letter of the word. And if I do Alt L for lowercase, it will capitalize it down. So let me just show you that again. So I'll do Control X U. Okay. Uh, the HTML is in caps. We don't want it in caps. We want it lowercase. I'm going to do Alt L. And it's lowercase. Okay. I can also go backwards. So let me do Control X U that way. And uh, eh, actually, hold on. No, I don't want to demonstrate that. Let me go here and let's go uh, back to the beginning. Let's lowercase this word and let's go in the HTML. Now, let's say I want to uppercase it. I can do Alt minus, Alt minus, I have to hold them down, uh, and then Alt uppercase, and it uppercases the previous word. If I want to switch that back to lowercase, I can do uh, Alt minus, holding it down, and then Alt L, and it switches it to lowercase. So you can see the doc type is changing. I want the doc type to be capitalized, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to do Alt minus, and then Alt U, okay? And then I uppercased it. So that's that's a cool trick, okay? I'm going to go to the other buffer with Control X O, and go down to overwrite mode, and do Control L to recenter that. And we can do over my overwrite mode. Uh, and I can write over it. So actually, I'm going to do that right in this buffer here. I'm going to do Alt X 
and just type overwrite, whoops, overwrite mode and hit enter. And now I can start typing right over this previous sentence. That feels pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna save that and I can toggle off overwrite mode again with Alt X. And then if I just press the up arrow, it brings me to my previous command. I can hit enter and you'll see that override mode is disabled in the current buffer. Okay, let's go over to this other buffer with Control X O here and go down to the bottom here. And let's do Control X, Control S to save it. And what I wanna do now is make some changes. So this is change one and this is change two. And let's go up here and delete this word also. Okay, so now what I wanna do is revert my buffer to where it was when I last saved. I can do Alt X and then revert. And remember I can hit tab and see what the completions are. The only possible one is revert buffer. If I hit enter, it's gonna say revert buffer from the file. You can say yes or no, you wanna type yes, hit enter, and it reverts it to its previous changes, okay? Let's go back over here. And now let's just talk about uh, the backup files. I'm going to do control L to recenter this. And um, so now we can restart Emacs with a backup file. To do that, uh, let's actually go over this other buffer here and go to the bottom here. And what I can do is I can, in a command line, I could type Emacs and then whatever the file name is, uh, dot whatever the extension is, let's say it's a text file. And then I would do the tilde for the backup file. That would restart it the backup file. I'm not going to actually go through it. I'm just going to explain it. Uh, we can save the backup file as a non-backup file. If I do control W, sorry, control X, control W, and then uh, type the file name to save, which would be file name.txt, okay, without the tilde. Okay, you can also set up Emacs. We may discuss this further. It's a little bit beyond the, the scope of this video, but you can also set the number of backup files you keep. So you have uh, like number two, number three, number four, and so on. Um, and you also have, when you're looking in your directories, when you're going through Dear Ed, remember you access Dear Ed with Control XD. Uh, when you're going through Dear Ed, you may see files that start with a hashtag. Those are auto-saved files. And you see right now, it just says auto-saving done. So it just auto-saved uh, this file for me. Okay, so I'll see in my directory a hashtag. So let's actually do that. So do control XD here. And if, uh, let me pull this, I can use the mouse here and move this over. And we can see that we have this hashtag editing to dot markdown. That is the auto saved file. Okay, I'm gonna go back into this file here. Actually, let me go over here and go back into that one and let's pull them back here back to about the same okay all right so that that's backup files uh, or and auto save files you can recover an auto save file by doing alt x and then recover file or if you have a different key besides the alt key the meta key and x and recover file um, and you the final thing i want to talk about is with the auto save files you can read the file first with control X, control F. So I'm talking about this down here, this bottom here. Uh, that'll allow you to read the autosave file and see if you want to actually re recover the file using that, okay, before you actually do. All right, so that's uh, some more of the key chord combinations in editing for Emacs. I hope you found this video enjoyable and informative. And if you did, could you please hit the like button as it will help get out to more people. I want to thank you also for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.